Hi guys, in this video we're going to be talking about energy transfers. Then we'll learn about the concepts of work done, conservation of energy, and we'll finish with a summary. We know that systems have energy shared amongst their energy stores. For example, a system can have energy in its nuclear energy store, or its kinetic energy store, or its thermal energy store. Now it turns out that energy can be transferred between these stores as a system changes. For example, as a system changes, we might find that some of the energy from its gravitational potential store moves into its kinetic energy store. Let's take a look at a physical process, which is an example of this type of energy transfer. Let's imagine we're holding a ball up above the ground, and then we drop it. Then to start with, it had energy in its gravitational potential energy store because it was being held high up above the ground. But once we let go, it started to move downwards, which means it started to lose some of its gravitational potential energy. However, as it's moving downwards, it gets faster and faster, and it has more and more energy in its kinetic energy store. Its kinetic energy store, if you remember, is the energy associated with the system actually moving. So in this example, as the ball is moving downwards, energy is being transferred from its gravitational potential store to its kinetic energy store. So we've seen an example of energy transfer in a system, but that something that might seem a bit mysterious is how was the energy actually transferred? Well, it turns out that energy can be transferred in four different ways. First of all, energy can be transferred mechanically. We transfer energy to a system mechanically when we push or pull on it. For example, if we used our hand to slide a block along a table, then we would say that we had transferred kinetic energy to this block mechanically. Another way we can transfer energy is electrically. For example, a kettle uses electricity to heat up the water inside it to boil it. Another way that we can transfer energy to a system is by directly heating it. For example, we can use a gas fire to boil the water in a pan. The final way that energy can be transferred is by radiation. One example of radiation would be light. Light can, for example, carry energy away from a light bulb towards our eye so that we can see. Now let's talk about the concept of work being done. The work done on or by an object is equal to the energy transferred from or to the object. Let's take a look at an example. Let's imagine pushing a block along a frictionless surface. Then the first question we might ask is, what is doing work? What has transferred the energy to the block? Well, the thing that got the block to move was our hand. So we say that it's the hand that was doing work. Another question we might ask is, what energy store has energy been transferred to? Well, the end result is that the block is now moving. So the energy must have been transferred to the kinetic energy store of the block. The next question we might ask is, what energy store was the energy being transferred from? And in the first video about energy, we said that the energy stored in our muscles is chemical energy. And since we've essentially used the muscles in our hand to push the block, the energy store that energy has been transferred from is the chemical energy store. Finally, we ask, how was the energy transferred? Well, we said that when we push or pull on something, we say that the energy has been transferred mechanically. And here we've drawn a picture to help us imagine the energy being transferred from the chemical energy of the muscles of our, in our hand to the kinetic energy of the block on the table. Let's take a look at another example now, an example of dropping a ball from high up. This time, the thing that's doing the work is a little bit more hidden. The thing that's actually causing the ball to move downwards is gravity. So it's gravity that's doing the work. And now what energy store has the energy been transferred to? Well, initially the ball wasn't moving and now it's moving. So it must have gained kinetic energy. Now what energy store is energy being transferred from? Well, before it was higher up and now lower down. So it's lost gravitational potential energy. And finally, we would say that energy was transferred mechanically gravity was essentially pulling on the ball. 
Overall, energy has been transferred from the gravitational potential store to the kinetic energy store. Let's look at another example of throwing a ball vertically upwards. Firstly, we say it's our hand that did the work because our hand transferred energy to the ball. Now it's quite interesting to ask what energy store this energy has been transferred into because initially what we've done is we've given it some kinetic energy. But then, after time goes on, the ball is getting higher and higher, so some of this kinetic energy is then actually being transferred into gravitational potential energy. It's also interesting to ask what energy stores the energy is being transferred from, because initially the energy was transferred from the chemical energy in the muscles in our hand to kinetic energy, and then later on the energy is being converted from kinetic energy into gravitational potential energy and the energy in both cases has been transferred mechanically. And in our energy store diagram, we imagine to start with, we had chemical energy, some of which was transferred into kinetic energy, and some of that has been transferred into gravitational potential energy. So let's look at the example of a braking car. So we imagine a car which was initially moving forwards, but has now been brought to a halt. Now when we ask what was doing the work here, we're asking what actually slowed the car down. Well essentially it was the brakes that slowed the car down, and it was the brakes that did the work. Now we want to know what energy store the energy is being transferred to. Well you might know that the brake stops the car by essentially rubbing against the axle, but in general when we rub things together really hard, for example our hands, they warm up. So what's happened here is that the energy has been transferred to thermal or heat energy. Now what energy store has the energy been transferred from? Well initially the car was moving and now it stopped moving, so it's lost kinetic energy. And again the energy has been transferred mechanically. So again, in our energy store diagram, we see energy transfer between the kinetic energy store of the car and the thermal energy store of the car. Now let's look at the example of an electric kettle boiling water. And the thing doing work here is the heating element of the kettle. And the purpose of the electric kettle is to boil the water or to heat up the water. So the energy store the energy is being transferred to is the thermal energy of the water. Now we know that we have to plug in a kettle to make it work, so we know that the energy we're using up is electrical energy. So the energy is being transferred from the electrical energy store. And finally we can see that the energy has been transferred electrically. Overall the transfer has been from the electrical energy store to the thermal energy store. Finally, let's look at a more complicated example of a car crashing into a wall. Well, the energy that transfer that's taking place here is that the car was moving and now it's not. And the thing that caused the energy transfer then was the brick wall, because it's the brick wall that stopped the car. Now, the difficult part of this question is to try and know what energy stores the energy has been transferred to. It turns out that to start with, there's been energy that has transferred to the heat energy of the car. This is because it turns out that whenever two objects crash into each other and stick together, we have heat produced. So energy is transferred to the thermal energy store. Secondly, we see that the front of the car has been compressed. And we actually said in our video about energy that energy due to compression is elastic potential energy. And finally, something that we haven't mentioned before is that actually when the car crashes into the wall, it makes a large sound. And it turns out that sound is also a type of energy. It's much easier to work out what energy store that energy has been transferred from. The car was moving and now it's not, so it's lost kinetic energy. And finally, the energy transfer is again mechanical. In our energy store diagram, we see that we started with kinetic energy, and some of this kinetic energy was converted into elastic potential energy by crumpling the car. Some of it was converted into thermal energy during the crash, 
and some of it was converted into the sound energy produced during the crash. So we've seen a lot of examples of energy transfers, but it turns out that all energy transfers obey a certain rule. Energy transfers always obey the principle of conservation of energy. And the rule is this. Energy can be transferred usefully, stored or dissipated, but never can be created or destroyed. Let's see an example of this law in action. Let's imagine we used our hand to push a block, but last time we saw this example, we were pushing our block along a frictionless surface, i.e. a completely smooth surface. This time, let's imagine that the smooth was rough or had friction. Let's see how the situation is different to the example where we had a surface that had no friction. Well, when we push or slide the block, as soon as we let go, the block is going at some speed. On the frictionless surface, the surface is smooth, so the block just keeps on going and going and going at this speed. But on the rough surface, we can imagine that the block would slow down quite quickly. But this would be confusing because we would say, well, initially, the block had some load of kinetic energy associated with its motion. But where's this energy gone? Has it been lost? Well, the point of the law of conservation of energy is that the energy can't be destroyed or it can't just disappear. So we might ask, where has the energy gone? Well, the idea is to remember that when this block is going along the rough surface, essentially what's slowing it down is that it's rubbing against the surface. And again, we know what happens when we rub things by rubbing our hands. We rub our hands to get warm. So the point is that this energy hasn't been lost or destroyed. It's just that some of it has become thermal energy rather than all becoming kinetic energy. And all of the chemical energy that was available or used has become either kinetic energy or thermal energy. So it turns out that not all the energy we put into a system ends up going towards doing the thing that we intended it to do. But these energy losses that can be a problem can be minimized by, for example, adding lubrication or thermal insulation. For example, when cogs rub against each other, there might be friction or heat, which is an unwanted loss of energy. And a way to work against this is to lubricate the cogs so that they slide past each other easily and less heat is produced. On the other hand, with something like a house, we might aim to try and heat the house, but some of the heat we put into the house then leaks back outside. And a way to work against this is to firmly insulate the house so that less heat can escape. So we've learned that energy can't be created or destroyed, but the total energy in an open system is actually allowed to change. And this is because in an open system, whilst energy is conserved, energy can enter or escape the system. For example, let's consider the spoon and the water together as one open system. Then as the spoon cools down, some of the heat from the spoon might go into heating the water but some of the heat from the spoon could be radiated out into the air as well. Therefore, once the spoon has cooled down, there might not be as much energy in this open system as there was when we started. On the other hand, the total energy in a closed system is unchanged because no energy can enter or escape the system and because energy is conserved. For our example of a closed system, we'll use the same hot spoon in water, but this time we'll imagine that the container is firmly insulated, which stops any heat escaping the system. Then in this case, when the spoon has cooled down, all of the heat must have gone into the water because there was nowhere else for the heat to escape. Therefore, in this system, energy is conserved. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing GCSE physics and combined science resource, Join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the SnapRevise smiley face and together let's make physics at GCSE a walk in the park.